Several state governments and local authorities that are currently ravaged by flooding were adequately and timely warned about the impending crisis, but they failed to take action. That assertion emanated from the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency. Director General of the agency, Clement Nze, during a television interview, regretted that had the authorities, especially at the state and local levels, had heard to weather advisories issued by the various federal government agencies, such as the Nigerian Hydrological Services Agency and the Nigeria Meteorological Agency, NIMET, the 2022 flood disaster would have been averted. Earlier this year, the two main relevant government agencies at the federal level that, if I may say, that do interrogate nature, the threat going to happen in the atmosphere, what happens on ground with regards to our, to our rivers, they were out early enough to set the tone of what to expect in the course of the year. The Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, came out February 15th to you know, paint the picture of what to expect, most likely. And my own agency, the Nigerian Hadoko Service Agency, later followed suit. He also said the Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, earlier in the year, wrote letters to state governors informing them of the impending devastating floods of 2022, but some of the governors did not heed the warning. The Honorable Minister of Water Resources that did the unveiling or the public presentation of our prediction, the annual flood outlook, issued warnings, issued letters to each state governor in Nigeria and the relevant ministries like agriculture, environment, aviation, informing them for the state governors the specific locations in their states that they should watch out for in the course of the rainy season when it you know when it establishes across the country those letters were authored by him signed and sent to the governors and they were informed the things likely to happen and the necessary measures that they need to take People are talking about land grab, land grab, land grab, throw away this bill, what we call in uh, our usual parlance here, throwing the baby with the bathwater. Could it be, please ask yourselves, could it be that there's nothing good about this bill, that everything about it is negative, that people are saying throw it out? Isn't it time for people to sit down, all the skeptics to say, look, wait a minute, what are the key provisions of this bill? But the antagonists are keep harping, this is about land grab, this is about Ruga, this is about uh, providing uh, full lining hiders uh, in the banks of the river, handing over the banks of the river. This laws, the law, the Water Resources Act has been in existence for nearly 40 years ago. The two major drainage systems we have are rivers Niger and Baby. River Niger flows in to Nigeria from Kebi State. River Benue flows in from Adamawa State. If there is no custodian at federal level, what would you think, what do you think would happen if Kebi State wakes up today and says it's going to down River Niger and Adamawa State is going to down River Benue? Imagine the scenario. What will happen to Niger State? What will happen to Kwegi State? What will happen to Anambra or Nishapot? What will happen to the Delta Asaba? What will happen to all the, the creeks and the... Uh, in According to the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, 
Over 300 people had been killed by devastating floods across Nigeria in 2022. Also, hundreds of communities have been submerged in Delta, Anambra, Bayelsa, Adamawa, Taraba, Benue, Kogi, Jigawa and Sakoto states, among others, with thousands of residents displaced and hectares of farmlands washed away, a development that analysts have opined could aggravate food crisis. We hardly get 150 trucks leaving this market daily with produce to various destinations. Previously, that number was between 300 to 400 trucks a day loaded with variety of produce. Nema had also warned that the 2022 flood disaster will be worse than that of 2012, when at least 363 people were killed and over 2.1 million people were displaced by floods. Ondo State's purposeful action plan on flood prevention and control tagged Operation Flush and launched in 2019 as a proactive measure of the state government. This measure was further strengthened by the purchase of more amphibious crawlers for deployment to all the parts of the state for continuous channelization of waterways. This sustained channelization exercise is playing crucial roles in averting potential natural disaster that could have also been the lot of Ondo State as forecast by Metrological Agency. The consulting firm partnering on those state government in waste management and environmental protection projects, ZL Global Alliance, hits the ground running, desilting all drainages and dredging all waterways, thus providing easy passage for water across the length and breadth of the states. With the announcements by the Nigerian Metrological Agency, Ondo State Governor Oluaro Timi Akeredolu set up a havoc prevention committee chaired by his deputy Honorable Lucky Ayedatiwa and representatives of the Ministry overseeing local government affairs as well as ZL Global Alliance to ensure that the way the central and northern senatorial districts of the state are safe from potential flood, the southern part of the state is not left in despair of flood jeopardy. That led to the dredging of communities in the southern district of the state and hence safety from flood. project is a project that is, um, well, um, solely ZLs, ZL Global Alliance, because there was Operation Flush in Kaduna State as well. However, but Operation Flush on those states is a bigger, you know, and more intense, uh, intensive um, flood control program in on those states. We, per year, in the first quarter, we follow NIMET and um, we use that to, to devise the, the footprints of how the amphibious crawlers and the dredgers will be clearing the waterways to at least reduce the natural effect of the rains and the flow. Originally, we were renting equipment 
amidst all this financial hardship and everything, the governor and the finance team decided with us that it's cheaper to buy. So initially there was one amphibious corner that we were moving around the sanitarium districts. Now things got a lot better in 2022 because in their magnanimity and hard work and everything, two more amphibious corners came into the, to the platform which meant that we had one for each senatorial district working, you know, simultaneously. And that did a lot of, uh, um, gave us a good progress report because we were attacking, you know, those issues momentarily, which really helped us. Already, areas prone to flooding in our Korea, the state capital, have been cleared. And so, no incident of flood was recorded despite the rains this year as earlier projected by the various weather monitoring agencies of governments. The southern part of Ondo State was not exempted from these many interventions as ZL Global Alliance, through the authority of Governor Oluaro Tibia Kiridolu, embarked on massive dredging of critical areas on waterways in a larger local government area, such as Idiogba, Alagmo, Magbenywa communities, among other riverine areas of the southern districts of the state. Apart from the dredging and the silting efforts made by the Undo State Government through its partner ZL Global Alliance, sensitization and mobilization of the people of the state to be aware and cooperate with government in dealing with predisposing factors that usually trigger flooding were also effectively carried out. This is also alongside intensive waste management. For every location, first of all, we have to get reports that, okay, this location is in need of an amphibious equipment, which it either comes to us through writing or through our feasibility studies. And then we move to locations and handle situations, you know, the mobile and demobilizing of equipment, which is the major thing. We use the low bed to take this equipment from one location to another. And then we ensure safety of lives while mobilizing as well, which is also another part of our job. And, um, Basically, what we have noticed that is a major challenge that causes um, flood in most of these locations is you can't, I don't know, the culture of um, dumping waste into canals must change. Now, people must not build without proper setbacks. You must not build on waterways. Now, all these things must be discouraged. And um, it, thank God it's a continuous one. Now, Operation Flush Project is not a project that only happens during the raining season. It's a project that happens continuously. Just like if you're doing um, the sweeping for, for, for oceans, that's how we also do constant channelization for canals here in Ondo State. And then with that, we can definitely be rest assured that flood issues will, in fact, even if it will ever be recorded, it is definitely going to be minimal. But with Ondo State having three equipment, and ready to, to, to arrest the situation, definitely I'm sure it's going to be zero tolerance for flood, just like it is right now in Ondo State compared to other states in Nigeria. With the many success stories of the Akiri Dolu administration in flood prevention and control through a well-thought-out action plan tagged Operation Flush, the people of Ondo State have been able to live without the adverse effects of flood being experienced in many parts of Nigeria. What is down paramount is the need to sustain and improve upon these moves that have aided flood prevention. There is also the need for further cooperation and support of the people of the state through proper waste disposal, respect for water rights of way by not building on river courses and also by not dumping wastes inside canals and waterways. We do not in the state, we do not wait for, the, for, for evil to happen. Even though the rains have gone, we know the rains will still come again between April, May and June. So here we're working, we're working, the big, we're being paid per month. So we're working round the clock to make sure that even if there are certain areas we didn't get to this year, we'll get to those places. 
Then in the area of um, Lassa fever and cold, when the rain stops, another problem starts. Yes, yes, flood is going to reduce, but vegetation control must continue. We're not going to be joking with vegetation control and the silting of drainages, gutters and all. Also, people with properties in very strategic locations, the Ministry of Environment is going to be going after them to make sure that no matter where your property is, you must at least maintain a good sanitation there by cutting your grass and packing refuse to reduce the menace of Lassa fever amidst monkeypox, amidst the pandemic. You know, you know, we're really working hard and I really thank the Undo State Government for the beautiful relationship we've had so far. We're working hard. We're not saying we're perfect, but we're getting better as the days go by. Undo State has done significantly well, but uh, the issues are a lot more than what we are seeing. Uh, for, for me, I believe that uh, if you want to tackle the issue of flooding, it's got to be something that is long term and something that needs a lot of planning even before now. Uh, the best that we can do now is just some measure of remediation. But I want to see a lot of prevention because, uh, yes, now communities are affected, but you should look at how they are affected, why they are affected, what are the causative, causative factors. Uh, if you look back, you find out that up to now, people are building on floodplains. And you know water. Water will always find its level. Uh, so if you block water channels, what happens to water? It will find its own way. If you can uh, swim over you, climb over you, and at the end of it all, you will find out that everybody will be under flood. It's even, water is even worse than fire. Uh, because when water comes, it's, it comes with a lot of power and with a lot of vengeance. Uh, one of the issues that I've seen is that most of the time we look at things and we want to do a lot of cosmetic issues. Uh, flood control is beyond cosmetics. I want to see us looking at uh, legislation. I want to see us looking at the laws guiding even where we build. Now that the rains are subsiding, efforts must be taken to ensure effective vegetation control, the silting of gutters and drainages, among other measures, to keep the state safe from post-raining season environmental distresses such as breeding of multi-mammal rats being vectors of Lassa fever and to also prevent other diseases such as monkeypox currently ravaging many states of the Federation. Indeed, all hands must be on deck to sustain the flood-free state of the Sunshine State.